Hey guys, welcome back. Um, as you might guess, by the looks of this machine in front, we've got another machine to check out. So this is a, um, a car that's been dropped off to a mate shop for me to have a look at and a bit of a go over, see if it's worth saving. So that's what this video is gonna be about. Now, um, it's called the Falcon. Now, I'm gonna say that I've never seen one. Um, I have seen a couple on YouTube. There's, there's practically two videos that I could find about this machine on YouTube. Um, it's got the look of it, the way it's set up, the way the motor's situated here in, in the back and where the air filter and all that is, it's kind of got the, an FG feel. So I don't know whether this is one of FG's early machines. Um, it kind of looks a bit like, not the same, but looks similar to the FG Marta buggy um but just the way that it's laid out and every i mean it looks pretty sound like the the with the tires the tires are what makes me think fg because you can see them like they're all the tires aren't too bad like they've got soft foams in this one's got a few cracks in the rubber and there's no foam in that one at all but yeah and it's run it's this is the old transmitter it's a crystal crystal type the old fm crystals uh, which is, sort of leads, leads me to believe that it's got a fair bit of age about it. Um, as you can see, it's pretty dirty, but um, it runs a 27cc, which is kind of what FG used to run back in the day, you know, when they were bringing out all the machines, probably even prior to the, to the Marta. But, um, <clears throat> so the plan for this is, like I was saying before, we're gonna go over it. We'll, uh, We'll rip this body off and have a look under the hood, so to speak. Um, see whether this battery in here is any good, if, if it'll take charge or not, and um, see if we can get the electronics to work. And um, this engine, uh, try and see if it'll run again, see if we can get that sorted. The, all the fuel lines I had, I can just by tell by looking at them, just broken off of the fuel tank, which is in the bottom here. Um, see, what, see what we can come up with. Like it's. It is an old machine and according to the owner, it's been sitting in, in the shed for a number of years. So we're probably gonna find a few things along the way that may need replacing. But with that being said, let's get into it. Get the hood off, let's have a look. And I'll walk you around the machine and then we can, I guess, start pulling some things apart and having a look, see if we can get this, this bad boy to breathe life again. So uh, let's get to it. Righto, here we go. Let's see if we can get this off. I think it's got buddy three three plates for body pins along each side there. There's no pins in it obviously, but it's a different style of body. Alright, let's get this off. There we go. Body off. As you can see, it is pretty pretty filthy. It's really it's a bit of a different sort of a style, isn't it? All right, now let's have a look around this chassis. Right, eh? You can see this thing's four wheel drive. Okay, so there's your center diff right there. Now it's missing front drive shaft that goes through on top, straight above your fuel tank here. And um, I'll move this thing out of the way for us so we can have a good look at here. All right, all right, there's, whoops. There's one of the front drive shafts. And of course, that one's missing. Look, it's got the uni, uni joints on the end here. If we look on this one here, you can see that one a bit better. Yeah, the old, the old uni style, uni joint style on there. Um, now there's a, the way that servo's set up there too, that's uh, like an FG setup, upside down servo, like my son's. FG Beetle, servo set up the same way as that. Radio box. Well, that switch is free, that's a good thing. And um, looking at these, we can see that. Connector's a bit dirty, but it doesn't look too bad. All that goes into the radio box here, sorry guys. And there's the fuel tank, right? So that, I'm gonna say that's like a fuel filter of some description. Now that's there's no grommet there either. 
Let's have a look in the fuel tank. Look, I mean, look at the she. Oh, dirt and stuff all over. Let's, let's take this off and have a bit of a look inside. Let's see how we go here. Now, yeah. yeah, it's not too bad. I was kind of expecting it to be a little bit more sludge in there, but that's not too bad. We clean the tank out and probably be okay. But um, so, I'm, so this will this will be your fuel to the car, be like your supply, and I'm going to say. What's been broken off here missing was would be the return line and this has got like a this is a breather so it goes along the back there around and out here just sort of down the bottom here so um as you can see what i was meaning about the air filter it's got this alloy shroud around it and um <clears throat> see there 27 cc all right yeah. you can see what i was talking about with that bloody air filter Got the shroud around here, and what's that there? Oh, look at that. There's a couple of gecko eggs in there. <laughs> Holy hell. Right, oh, geckos must have been making a home in there, eh? So God knows what we're going to find inside there. All right, now, another thing that made me think FG, sorry guys, was, um, look at that, look at that diff. That looks like a typical FG rear diff setup the way the way this is here so that's what made me think it's some kind maybe some kind of fg um not too sure but if you guys have got an idea leave a leave a comment in the um down, the, down below guys let me know what you think but um and you can see the rear has the the dog bone set up in there the cups don't look too bad drive shaft cups look all right and if you can see there it might be hard to see on the back here but i think this thing is running square drives might be able to see inside there a bit better if i can get a look in there it's a bit hard to see guys i might have to pull a wheel off and give us a look but um yeah, she's definitely been sitting for a while. Okay, there you go, guys. Square, square drives. Same as FG. The inside of the wheel. And same on the front. Now, I'm going to say, those bearings, well, oh, they're not too bad. Hang on guys, let me get out of the way here. Here we go. The bearings, they feel a bit stiff. Yeah, they probably need replacing. But they're not notchy, so you can probably be okay for a test drive if we can get this thing to run. So, so it does have a square drives. Now, one thing with the Bajas and everything, you can actually use, uh, use their, their hexes. And just just buy the adapters for these so you remove these and there's an adapter that goes in their place and you can you can put the baja hex hexes on here and run baja wheels and tires on this so that's something else to keep in mind too for a lot of you uh fg owners out there um buy the adapters so switch them out with the baja ones like i said you can buy the adapter to fit onto here so that you can run the Baja wheels and tires. Look at that style bumper bar there. It's pretty solid. I mean, you look at the look at the chassis layout. It's got the buddy two side bits that drop down and goes across, comes up and out again. Looks pretty solid. And there's a bit closer look at the center diff. It's pretty big. It's Almost as big as the one in the back. Definitely needs a clean. But it's got a pretty cool pipe on it. You can see how it's bent bent up to um, go over the throttle linkage. Right there. Let's actually let's drag this around. Get a look at the other side. Sorry guys, moving the camera around a bit. So we can get a good look at this side now.
There we go. There's another look from the uh, center diff on the opposite side. And you can see the exhaust, how it's curved to go over these linkages here, which is not a bad idea. And there we go. Have a look at that drive set up there. Now we'll pull that cover off in a minute so we can have a look at that. But yeah, so similar to Mavericks and HSPs and all that sort of stuff. I would, I would imagine just by looking at that that casing there. You can get a bit, bit of a look at this uh, drivetrain here. I've got a couple of top bolts out. There's one in the screw in the bottom, which I don't even know how you're supposed to get at. It's a pain in that backside. But here we go. Main pinion. Ah, sorry. Spur. And you've got the rest of those suckers in there, which don't look too bad. Are all metal gears. So, um, I think it's all okay. Everything looks pretty good in there. So we can button that back up because that, the bolts to hold them on go right through these tubes here. Where are we? Right through these tubes here and bolt straight to the, straight to the engine. So it all looks good. I don't know what the clutch is like, but we'll find out when we, when we fire this bad boy up. But yeah, and then you got in here, the brake pack, the brake setup. And you can see that in there, if I can get my hand in here, guys, you can see in here, sorry, straight in there, be able to see, see the, um, like a pinion in there. And if you have a good look at it, if you have a close look at it, if I can get the camera, see how the gears are cut. That's probably not too bad. The gears are cut on a, um, on an angle. I'll see if I can roll this forward to get them to move. There we go. See how they're cut on an angle? So that's not too bad. And then looking on the... I don't know if we can get a close look at that. Look on the... Um, not gonna, it's going to be hard to see, guys, anyway, I think. But the gears, are, the teeth... Hang on, let me get my finger out of here. Um, the teeth on here are cut on the angle as well. So, yeah, it's... It says to me, it looks like it's FG. There we go. It's got a pipe on it. Um, doesn't look too bad, really. It's pretty grubby, but we can give it a clean. There's a bit of grass in the head I saw around the other side. So it had been run and then probably just left, left sit. So as you can see, there's a front diff set up there. There's a drive cut missing out of this side. So maybe there's something wrong with that front diff. I'm not too sure. But we'll delve into that a bit later. Um, now the steering setup. So the, you can get this sort of setup for the Bajas nowadays too. The, um, I forget what they call that. Is it the... Oh, I can't think what they call that setup now. The F, FGs were, were known for it. Um, gives you... Sort of like an even throw on the steering each way, you know, left and right, even throw. But um, but yeah, all in all, not too bad, not too bad. I have seen worse. <clears throat> but yeah, so, and you know, in the shocks, the shocks are pretty big. I mean, there's my thumb. So you get a bit of an idea on the size. I don't know if they're the same size as the Lossy 510 and all that, but I'll tell you what, they'll be damn close. So yes, not bad. Keep getting my bloody finger in the way. <clears throat> All right, guys, so there we are. <clears throat> Bit of a look under the hood, so to speak. And um, one other thing I noticed on this too. Bottom arms. Look at them. Bottom arms. Alloy suspension. Which, you know, if this came stock with it, that's not a bad thing. Lower arms, <clears throat> alloy, and I think the rears. We bring the camera around the back, like we've seen, like we seen before. Yeah, there you go. Alloy lower, lower arms in the back. So, um, and I remember, I have seen this before. This style set up here. And you can see the, see the other one in there. Now that I remember the FG Formula One cars. Very similar setup, although the suspension was totally different, but the, the rear arms had this screw in type set up on the back of theirs. So I might do a bit of 
bit of research on this thing and just see because all these things I've seen on this on this car so far it seems to lead me to believe that this might be some kind of earlier version of an FG so um but yeah that's a bit of a walk around it guys I don't yet know what carby that is but what we can do is um that fuel bulb there that pressure might have a little crack on the top of that but anyway but that's a walk around it guys so the next step is we'll start getting getting the cover off this battery here see if it'll take charge because no doubt it's going to be dead flat um, see what connections on there if that battery is no good I might have one we can put in there just to see if we can get all this electronics to work and um, I think what I'm gonna have to do the fuel system on this thing looks a bit ordinary so I'll hook up another tank another tank to this carby and see if we can get this thing to fire check check the spark and all the rest of it so um, all right let's get to it let's start Pulling some stuff off and have a look and see what's what. Um, I think what I'm going to firstly do is I'm going to try... First two things, I should say, that I'm going to try to do here is try and get the electronics to work and see if I can get this engine to start. So, let's do it. Let's... Uh, we'll start with the electronics first. Get that out, get the battery out and see if it'll charge. And while that's happening, we'll get into this thing. Right, guys. See you in the next Sorry bit. about the shadows. Um, as you can see in the battery tray, there's a fair bit of fair bit of dirt and grass and stuff in there. Now, I started the video this before, and it was a bit of a handful. So what I've done is I've removed the, the battery cover, which is right here. So you got the two screws. So it was in there like that. With a screw there, and a screw there on, on each side. And let me tell you, this battery was very was very very tight in there so i've got him out now let's have a look at it let's see what we got here um i don't know so it's not a not a brand name stuff so to speak but nickel metal nickel metal hydride battery 3600 milliamp excuse me six volt and it's standard charge 16 hours so if you had a a wall charger or something like that that you sort of get with your RC machines just a wall just a wall charger nothing flash that's that's what it, according to this that's a long time though it's saying it, it'll take uh, 16 hours at 360 milliamps and a rapid charge one and a half hours at 3600 milliamps so yes that's pretty much the same as me um, his son's battery out of his FG, which um, actually I'll, I'll grab it and give you a look. All right, here's the one out of his FG. Same sort of thing. It's a bit. It's just a. It's not a bad battery actually. The same deal. 3600 milliamp, six volt. And there you go. Look. Look at the two side by side. That's the difference. Okay, so 16 hours at 360. And this one says 12 hours, 360. That's a bit, that's a bit funny, isn't it? And then you go down to here, 1.2 hours. That's the same there for a rapid charge, 3,600 milliamps. So that's that's pretty interesting, actually. When you look at this one, supposedly 16 hours, and this one 12, and they're both the same battery, both the same capacity, I should say. So yeah, that's that's interesting. So, but yeah, that's not too bad. And like, you know, there's another, the battery holder on my son's FG just fits that. The, this machine just fits that, so yes. What we should do, what we will do now is, now that I've got that out of there, um, and this one's got that style plug on the end, which is something you'd plug straight into your receiver. So, and my son's battery, same sort of style. So, all right. All right, let's plug this thing in and see how we go. See if she'll take charge. Like it was, it doesn't look too bad, you know. 
I'll get a little bit of wear. It's obviously old, but um, not too bad. The, the cables look all right. They come out, come, they come out of there. But um, there's a couple of bumps on it and that. But uh, right, let's plug her in and see if she'll take some charge. So right, we're plugged in now. This one is a 3600 milliamp, right? And it is one, two, three, four, so it's a five cell nickel metal hydride. So what I'm gonna do on here is I've already got my charger set, the nickel metal hydride charge, manual charge. So I'm gonna charge it at one and a half amps. So we'll see how we go. Uh, all right, so we're ready to go. So hold him in. Ah, short error. So that means I think the battery might be no good. No good. So might be short to ground or something. Like this battery may be no good. But that's okay. That's okay because the battery in my young fella's FG is, is about the same as this one. So we'll hook that one up and see how we go. All right, guys, here we go. The battery out of me, me son's FG, the same size, right? Now, <clears throat> I've gone ahead and I've put some batteries into this old transmitter. So we'll turn him on and see what happens. See if it still works. Oh, look at that. So we'll get the camera out of the shadow, eh? There we go. Still works. All right, now got this plugged in sorry about my fingers guys got this plugged in so we'll hit the switch and see what happens <laughs> well, we had some noise there that's a good thing so let's see what happens here now the young bloke's battery won't be fully charged but still even for an old machine the steering Works. Alright, let's check the throttle out. Mm. I'm gonna say that servo might be no good. There's a lot of sound coming from it, but not a lot of movement. Let's try that again. Yeah. Okay, so. So that throttle servo. Yeah, I can feel it, feel it humming already. It's, it's like it's, I can feel it vibrating. So that, that survey's no good. All right, so we know that now. So the steering works good. So that's, that's good for now. We'll be able to deal with that a bit later. So <clears throat> I've got to start writing a list on stuff that's wrong with this thing. So first thing off the list, battery, no good. Throttle servo, no good. So that's the start of it. All right, so now we at least know that the electronics do work to a point where the receiver is doing its job. The steering works and we've got power to the servo. So the servo is no good, but good thing is that the radio gear actually works in here. So the next thing we'll go on to now is we'll, we'll try and um, See if we can get this thing to fire up. But like I said earlier, I'm probably, because of the fuel lines and like this one here, this is, there we go, that's an old fuel line. It's just broken off. So because of that, I'm gonna have to um, fit, up a, fit up a tank just so that I can try and prime this. And I'm gonna say that maybe that primer, primer bulb there be no good either, the fuel primer. Um, but yeah, so we'll see if we can get some spark out of this thing. I'll hook up an external tank to it, see if we can get some fuel into it and see if it fires. Righto, let's get to it.